yells, welcome to Home Studio Q&A here on Studio Live today for another week. This is your weekly dose of home recording, mobile recording, the gear, the apps, the software, and everything in between. I'll be your host uh, and co-pilot, Pete Johns, for the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes, and we have uh, a live crew here uh, ready to go, who are the pilots, really, of the show. I'm serving them, because uh, collectively, they know a heck of a lot more about recording than I do, because, uh, yeah, what is it, the sum of the parts is uh, bigger than the whole? Something like that. We're going to get into some questions in just a few moments, but to kick off the show, we're going to go with our Topic of the week. This week, we're talking about guitars. Yes, how do we connect up our guitars? How do we record guitars in the home studio? And we're specifically focusing in on electric guitars in this one. I have a heap of videos on the channel all about guitars, whether you're recording acoustic or electric or bass, all the gear you need, all the software you need. But let's cover the basics here, which is if you got a guitar, how do you connect it up to your iPhone or iPad or your Mac or PC and get recording? Well, the first thing you're going to need is some gear to actually do it. Now, gear is not the answer to everything, but really, if you're using an electric guitar, you've got to plug it in somewhere, yeah? So let's jump in and take a look at some of the easiest gear and the best quality gear for connecting up your stuff. Now, if you're watching on the video here, I've jumped over to the gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. And uh, this is my home on the internet where I share everything that I use and that I've tested so that you don't have to. I do the hard work. I, I'm the guinea pig and this is all of the different gear I use. So if we scroll on down to audio interfaces, you'll see that I've got a bunch of recommendations here. But let's go through from budget up to epic what your options are for audio interfaces that can connect up your guitar. Let's start with the basics. Now, what I'm showing on the screen here for those on the uh, podcast version is the iRig 2. Now, this is the original, the OG iRig. Well, it's the number two. The original iRig literally had a 3.5mm TRRS adapter to plug into your headphone jack. It had a jack for your uh, guitar to plug in, and it had headphones so that you could monitor your guitar. It is still a good device. It still does the job. We'll talk about some of the pros and cons in a moment, but the only difference with the iRig 2, and you'll be seeing this on the video, is it has an output for your amp. So what you can actually do is plug it in and then actually send the output out to an amp as well. So if you want to both record your guitar onto your iPhone or iPad and send it out to an amp, you can do exactly that. Now, as I said before, it uses the analog connection and there is a big difference between analog and digital here. Analog means that it's going to just send that analog guitar signal to your iPhone, iPad, Mac, PC, and that's going to have to do the analog to digital conversion. Some of the higher end interfaces we look at actually do the conversion in the box, and that gives you better quality sound. It gives you less interference and less noise in your guitar signal. Now, sometimes you may want a noisy guitar signal anyway, but sometimes when you're trying to get some nice clean tones, or even when you're distorting on purpose, you get all these additional artifacts and they can be a little bit uncool. So the original iRig, this is the $40 one from IK Multimedia. Yes, you can buy clones of this for $10 and $5 and wish.com and all that sort of stuff, but the quality is going to, you know, your mileage is going to vary. So if you're starting out, this is a good place to start. Next up is the, this is what I would actually recommend. If you're going to go for something like this, I would actually, instead of picking up the iRig, I'd pick up this. And I'm holding it in my hand as well as showing you on the screen. This is the Tascam IXZ or IXZ. What you can see there is that it not only has a guitar input, but it has a mic preamp as well with 48 volts of phantom power, still using your analog connection. So still plugging in via that headphone jack, but it means that you've got a lot more flexibility here because you can plug in a microphone. If you're micing up an acoustic guitar, I know we're talking electric, but if you're micing up an acoustic, you can use that and it has the input there for your guitar as well. So this one is a good deal. And as you can see there, it's $60. So we started with $40 for the iRig 2. We're up to $60 here. So if you, uh, if you want to get the best possible quality analog signal, that's what you're going to go for. Let's go up into the digital world. And you can see you take a bit of a jump here. When you go to the HD2, the iRig HD2, then you're going to spend $99. But the difference is you can connect this one up via either Lightning 
or via USB. So you can see here, if you're looking on the, on the uh, screen, it's got HD2 guitar interface for iPhone, iPad, Mac, and PC. And this is why these are good, because they come in the box with the cables you need to connect up to anything. There it is, there's the, there's the cables there. So you've got your standard USB cable that you can connect up to, and you've got a lightning cable as well. So for, for folks who are using a Mac and PC and an iPhone or iPad, this is a good deal. And uh, if you're worried that you know, you're gonna upgrade to an iPad Pro in the future, you're gonna lose your lightning jack and then your gear's gonna be no good, this is a good purchase as well for that. Everything else is basically the same. The only difference, as I said, is you get better quality signal because the actual device is doing the analog to digital conversion of your guitar signal and it's sending that through to your uh, Mac PC, iPhone, iPad, and you're gonna get better quality sound from that. Once again, there is an option that has the guitar and the mic pre, and this is actually what I use. This is the IK Multimedia iRig Pro IO, stands for input output, because it does it all. And yes, I have mine right here. It's, I, I store it in its box uh, to make sure I keep all the bits together because this has a lot going on in here, and uh, I'll take you on a quick tour. So if you want the ability to connect up your everything, this is what you want. And you can see here, uh, for those watching on the video, this one comes with it all. It comes with a, again, the same, uh, oh, what's that one? Oh, that's your, that's your output. Uh, it comes with MIDI. So you see you've got two MIDI connections there for MIDI in and out. It also comes with a USB and a lightning. So whatever you're connecting, you're covered. And there's the four different cables there to connect everything up. So yes, you heard right. This one not only has the ability to input a guitar signal, a microphone signal, it also has MIDI. So I can't find the bit where it shows you the MIDI. There they are, the MIDI connections on the side there. It's got 48 volts of phantom power. It's got a pretty nice preamp in here for a little device. It's actually a very decent preamp that you have in there. You can dial in your gain independently, and we'll talk about gain in a moment, and your volume. And uh, it is my go-to device. If you want simple, if you want good quality, but also simple, uh, $150, the iRig Pro IO. And by the way, all of this stuff is at uh, studiolivetoday.com slash gear, and I've also linked it in the description of this video if you're watching here on YouTube. Next up, yeah, it's just the double version of that, the Duo IO. So if you wanna make sure that you can record guitar and mic at the same time, or stereo line in, or two guitars, yeah, you wanna go for the iRig Pro Duo IO. And it's simply the exact same device, but with two inputs instead of one. So two is better than one sometimes. You're gonna pay an extra 50 bucks, $200 for that one. And uh, yeah, it, it's a good deal if you, again, if you're recording two separate sources at the same time. Moving into more of the desktop style uh, interfaces here. Yes, I can't go a single show without mentioning my favorite audio interface. There it is, but there it is there as well. It is the Steinberg UR22C. It is my favorite interface. It is built like a tank. It is uh, the, one of the better quality interfaces in this price point. So this is $190. So you're going to pay about the same as you would for the iRig Pro IO. The difference is, even though you might get slightly better quality with this, uh, you need to plug it in via USB, which means if you want to go into an iPad or an iPhone, you'll need a lightning to USB adapter or a USB-C to USB adapter, depending what device you're plugging it into. And you may also need a powered hub or some sort of power source to power this one up because it runs off of USB power. Something I didn't mention about the, the iRigs is that, yeah, the phantom power in the iRigs runs off of batteries and all the other power runs straight off of your device. So it can use a bit of additional power. You can use an external power supply with those if you want, but they're plug and play. This one will definitely need you some additional power supply, but you're gonna get I've talked about it a lot. You can you can find me ranting about it many times over, over on the channel. But the Steinberg UR22C is a great deal. And last but not least, if you want to go next level with your guitar, yeah, it's this one. Uh, I've actually got it plugged into my iPhone, uh, my iPad right now, so I can't show it to you. But it's the X-Tone Pro from X-Sonic. And what you can see here is this one not only has two inputs here, so it's got an input for guitar and it's got an input for guitar or mic. You've actually got stomp box pedals on here. You've still got 48 volts of phantom power. You've still got your gain switch. But if you want to take your guitar playing to the next level and you want the ability to have a pedal board, which you can hook up and then use all your different guitar effects and guitar amp sims and everything on your device, well, this is what you want to go for. Uh, the X-Tone Pro 
Smart Stomp. And there's a few different models of this one. This is the pro version. You can get a smaller version. These are about $200 over on Amazon. So that's the gear. That's how you get yourself connected. And the reason I spent so much time on that is I get asked that question a lot. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I had a one-stop guide through everything from $40 up to $200 what you can do to get yourself connected. And the quality grade is going to change over that. If you want something entry level, go the iRig or go the Tascam IXZ, IXZ. If you want something middle of the range, the iRig, uh, the iRig HD2 is a good option for 100. And then if you want something even better around that $200 mark, the Pro Duo or the Steinberg is the way that I would go. Couple of additional things I'll mention here about guitars. Once you plug them in, and we didn't even cover this, we're not covering it in this video, but once you plug in your guitar, then you just need some sort of software, which is called an amp simulator. Now you can pick these up pretty much anywhere for any platform. So IK Multimedia's Amplitude was kind of the OG, and you'll get that if you buy any iRig for free included or a version of it anyway. You can use something like the Stark Amp Sim from Clevgrund. You can use Bias FX. You could use Tonebridge. You can simply use GarageBand. So you can plug into GarageBand on your Mac or your PC. You can come in here, you can hit the plus button, and you can dial in a guitar amp tone. So there's amp sims built right into GarageBand, whether you're on a Mac or on a iOS device. So there's plenty of ways to actually record and get those tones going into your device. The other things with recording, experiment with your tones, experiment with different plugins. There's a heap of different free software that you can use and you can try out there. The input gain, if I'm going to give you one tip, if you're walking away from this with one single tip about recording, set your input gain correctly and you want it to be where your peaks are hitting between 50 and 70%. If it's too high and you start clipping, it's going to sound terrible. If it's too low and you can't even see your waveform, it makes editing really hard and it also means you're probably going to have to turn the volume up. You're going to introduce a bunch of noise floors. So if you're using an, an interface for the first time, experiment with it and get it so that your waveforms are sitting again around that 50 to 70% mark is a good place. Experiment with EQ. Change around the EQ can actually change your guitar tone quite dramatically. So use the Visual EQ in GarageBand or any sort of EQ plugin to do that. And what about our poor acoustic friends? Well, yeah, we didn't cover it a whole lot here. I have got videos about recording acoustics using a microphone, but again, you know what I do a lot these days? On my Taylor in particular, it's got a really nice uh, mic, uh, really nice pickup in there. So I just plug that into my guitar interface, to my Steinberg UR22C, and it gives me a pretty good tone. Like I know that really a lot of the, the pros will tell you you should record with a microphone. I record direct in through my acoustic and it still sounds great. In my opinion, so there you go, guitars, get yourself connected, get recording and do your thing. All righty, uh, Andy Goldsby says he's loving the Focusrite solo. Yeah, uh, as well as the Steinberg UR22C, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or Scarlett Solo, Steinberg UR12, Presonus Audio Box, basically anything in that $100 to $200 USB audio interface range made by a decent company is going to do you well. We'll have a quick drink and then we'll jump into your questions. Alrighty. Uh, so I did notice a few questions that are here in the chat, so we'll jump into those. I do have a form as well there, so if you do want to ask a question, if you can use the form that's linked there in the chat, in the comments, in the description, that'll help out. I'll be able to get to all of those. Uh, I've got a question here from Lee Davies. Lee says, well, it's covering my face. <laughs> Question is, hi Pete, I use a condenser mic, hello, I use a condenser mic via a Focusrite 2i2 to record some singing and acoustic guitar, I record the audio with GarageBand on iPhone, and then I use the Pinnacle app to join my audio from GB with a video, I record it on a different phone to join them together, I just tried to use the iPhone camera app, but when I monitor it only comes through the left speaker, I understand I'm using one channel on the 2i2, but is there a way to record stereo video using the same phone, same phone con, same phone. Uh, so yeah, this is a common problem and I've been meaning to make a video on it for a long time. So as you will have noticed, when I hold this one up, when I hold up the Steinberg UR22C, it has two inputs. So it has, I can't get it in the light right there, but it has two inputs over here. It has a left and a right, channel one, channel two. Now when you're recording in something like GarageBand, excuse me a moment. When you're recording in something like GarageBand, you can say, take channel one, so take my left channel, and then just put that in the middle because you've got panning control. The problem with your camera app is you don't have any panning control and an audio interface, a two channel audio interface is just stereo. 
So it's kind of just using left and right so that it doesn't have to have anything particularly complex. It's just using stereo, which means a lot of your apps on your iPhone and iPad will pick up each channel as left and right instead of channel one mono, channel two mono. If you want them as mono, there's a couple of things you can do. You can try a different camera app. So there's camera apps like I use one called Movie Pro, about a $10 app, and there's one... I can't remember the name of it. It's the one that most people use, but because I use Movie Pro, I've forgotten about it. But basically, there's paid camera apps that give you much more uh, flexibility and more options. So you can do things like take your audio and force it mono and things like that. So you can do it on the recording side. What I do is I, if I'm recording video on my camera and I need, and it's only on one side and I need to make it stereo or at least copy it across, what I do is use Luma Fusion, and uh, Luma Fusion is actually on sale right now. It's a it's a very very powerful video editing app for your iPhone or iPad. It's I think twenty dollars on sale at the moment. Usually it's thirty dollars one time payment. And what you can do with Luma Fusion is bring in your video, and if the audio is all on one side, there's actually a function in there saying fill left to right or fill right to left. So you can actually add that to your audio channel, and it will just fill it out. It'll take whatever's on the left, replicate it, and put it on the right as well. So you can turn one channel channel on your left or right into a mono channel on both. So hopefully that helps you out. Let me know how you get on though and hopefully you can get yourself sorted. Uh, I thought I saw one more question. So yeah, question early on here from Curtis. Hello to you Curtis. Hi Pete, how can I access all the guitar tones in Tonebridge from GarageBand FX? It currently only shows favorites. Yeah, I've been playing around with Tonebridge for a little while and maybe this is something that someone in the chat can help us with. I tend to just search for it. You definitely can save your favorites in there and they will be in GarageBand. If you just search the tone, it'll be there. I'm not sure if there's a way to directly have like your whole pedal board and every all the effects you've had there. But yeah, what I normally do is just when I've been playing so far, save them as favorites and access them from there or just research them. If I know I'm, I'm using a Pearl Jam tone, I'll just search Pearl Jam or Nirvana, I'll search Nirvana and then bring them in to GarageBand that way. So maybe someone, uh, maybe someone else has some more suggestions here in the chat all righty um so i'll, I'll just see if uh, yeah so mark, mark says he's working with the 2i2 so yeah the uh, the focus right scarlet 2i2 the steinberg ui22 they're definitely the ones that i would go to and recommend if you're getting into home recording uh, you really can't go wrong the the focus right preamps are really nice the yamaha d pre's on this steinberg are really nice and again because it's doing all the digital to analog convert uh, sorry analog to digital and digital to analog conversion for you it means that you're not having to rely on the converter in your phone or your tablet or your Mac or PC, which are less than ideal, to say the least. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, have I noticed? A question from Tom. Hello, Tom. Hope you're doing well. Uh, have you seen that StreamYard introduced a new $10 per month plan? Do you think they'll be phasing out the free version? It didn't seem clear to me if that was the case. So if you're uh, not familiar with StreamYard, it is what I'm using right now. So the reason that I can have this nice branded banner around me, this overlay, and uh, that I can do all the switching, I can put your comments up here on the screen, I can share my screen, I can share my iPad, I can do all these things, is because of StreamYard. If you want to find out more about StreamYard, there's a link down below. You have only just caught up on this, Tom, and what I believe is that the, the new plan the ten dollar a month plan does have it still has the Streamyard watermark on there, but it's unlimited. So they still do have their their current free plan, which lets you stream for forty hours a month, I think. And I, I haven't heard from from the Streamyard folks that they're planning to remove that anytime soon. So you can sign up to Streamyard for free. Again, link down in the description. In fact, there's an affiliate link down in the description if you want to do your own live streaming and sign up to Streamyard. But uh, yeah, I think they're just. The, the, they had a basic plan and a premium plan, which was like $25 for basic per month and $50 for premium. And I think what they were hearing from folks is that they want, they didn't care about the watermark thing, but they were hitting the 40 hour limit. Now, I, I stream a lot, but I don't hit 40 hours a month limit. So I don't know how these people are streaming for more than 40 hours a month, but yeah, apparently there is now that budget option that if you just want unlimited streaming, but you don't mind having the watermark, then you can actually do that. And uh, just to show you what that watermark looks like, if I take off my batter around there, it'll just have this in your corner, powered by StreamYard like that. So, you know, it's not, not a big deal, but it just means that if you have the, the free plan or that cheaper plan, I believe the cheaper plan, it still has that one there. Let's pop my pop my frame back around me. Uh, so hopefully that helps out. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's jump over here. 
and take a look. And we've got a bunch of questions coming in from folks on the form here. So why don't we jump in and answer some of those? We've got a question from Jade Star. Not really a question. <laughs> Yesterday, I spent three hours in Logic Pro, Logic Pro on Mac. We are planning our wedding soon. Will you come to the wedding? You can bring GarageBand. <laughs> So uh, if you don't know, uh, well, um, uh, if you don't know Jade, most people watching or listening will know Jade. Uh, Jade Starr does her how-to app series. She's just got a Mac M1 and she's been uh, playing with Logic Pro and apparently enjoying it significantly. And I have to bring bring GarageBand along to the, the marriage ceremony between Jade and Logic Pro. So there you go, joining the dark side. I'll, I'll, I'll have to ban you from future GarageBand user uh, <laughs> videos here on the channel. Question from the one and only Gary Hubs. Are you going to get a Rangers jersey now that Lundqvist is in Washington? Now, this is a super important question. And in case you don't know, I'm a big hockey fan. I'll, I'll relate it back to audio in a moment because I, I used to do the audio, um, the live audio, what, what do you call it? Announcing. See, it's been so long since I've watched sport, I've forgotten what it's called. I used to be the announcer for the uh, the Adelaide local Adelaide teams in the National League here in Australia. Um, the Adelaide Adrenaline and the Adelaide Rush. Shout out to my friends out there and hopefully you can get back on the ice soon uh but yes <laughs> will i be buying a rangers jersey no i'm I, i've seen their new retro jerseys that they've got and they look really cool they're like the old statue of liberty logo but yeah i'm i'm yeah uh, th there's too much going on in the world right now for me to get into to hockey jerseys and especially since king henrik uh henrik lundquist i even have the i have the lundquist jersey that i'll still wear with pride even though he's no longer a New York Ranger. So yeah, a little bit devastated there, but I won't talk too much hockey. But oh yeah, the announcing stuff. Uh, if you ever have an opportunity, if you're into sport and you're into music and audio like I am, talk to your local sporting clubs because especially things like baseball and ice hockey and pretty much any sport, they'll have someone doing some sort of announcing. And those people don't get paid <laughs> and they usually desperately want people. It's a great way to learn live audio. So the amount of stuff I learned doing that in live situations that now helps me in the studio even, things about leveling, things about gain, about how to enunciate because you have to speak very clearly and very slowly because you're coming through some crappy loudspeakers in a stadium full of people all screaming and yelling. If you want to actually have your announcements heard, you have to speak low and slow. That's what I used to do every time I do announcing. I just sit there and have a little pep talk for myself. I'm like, remember, Pete, low and slow. Because my natural speaking voice is actually a little bit high. It's actually up around here. And I talk really fast. Have you noticed that? Have you ever watched a video where I get really excited and I just start talking really, really fast? And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this app. It's the best app I've ever seen. So yeah, I have to actually go down half an octave and talk much slower. And if you want to learn these sort of skills, the best way to do is to throw yourself in the deep end and go and uh, get involved. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be sports. If you're not into sport, that's fine. Any local organization that has something where you need to communicate information from one person to a group of people, then uh, get involved. Ashley De Silva says, in GarageBand Mac, can we convert the auto drummer waveform and convert it into the MIDI format by copy and pasting? Is there a way to do it for iOS? Oh, sorry, in GarageBand Mac, we can convert. Is there a way to do this in iOS? I tried, but was not able to. No, I don't believe so. So what uh, what the uh, Ashley is referring to here is if we have a drummer one, boom, 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 we come over here, uh, right. So if we have a, a drummer track, that's a guitar track, but let's <laughs> let's choose a drummer track. Uh, I think I have one. No, I don't have one on this track. We'll add one. So we'll add in a drummer. So we'll come in here to GarageBand. We'll add in a drummer like this. And so we've got Anders doing his thing, right? And it's these yellow tracks. But the problem is this is not MIDI tracks, right? This is audio that gets automatically manipulated by GarageBand. Let's just see if I've got my uh, audio on here. Yep. So what you're saying is, can we can we take this and convert it into individual tracks so that we can actually have it as drum tracks that look more like these ones? So your, your regular conventional green drum tracks. I don't believe so. I've never come across a way to do it. If someone knows how to do it, I would love to know and I'll make a video on it and a lot of people will be happy. But with because these are basically a, an automatically generated audio track, it just means that the actual waveform, if you look at the waveform up the top there, as I change and as here, and add in different things, this actually changes. But there's no way to then send that out, which is a shame because all it's doing really is programming the drum kits that are already there. 
So maybe someone else knows how to do it. And if you do, uh, let me know because I'm all ears. And I know, again, I get asked this question a lot. So I know many other people are all ears too. Uh, let me just fix up that. Oh, let's see, my new, my new frame doesn't frame my iPad properly. I need to make it slightly smaller. Anyone else pedantic like this? Where you just look like, I've gone to the effort of having this frame and, <laughs> and now it's like, there we go. That looks cool. Uh, sorry for the folks on the audio version of this. We're talking about things that are on the screen. I know. Uh, not, uh, not cool. <laughs> uh, Lady Rodline says, Jade, uh, it's brilliant. So I get your nuptials. Congrats. There you go. Yes, we are gathered here today to join uh, this creator and this DAW in holy matrimony. So you've got to have a bit of fun. I, I did open it up and say, yeah, just use the form and have some fun and ask me some fun questions because uh, why not? Music, music creation has got to be about fun. If, you, if you're worried that we're getting off topic here, well, yes, we are. But you've got to have fun when you're creating music as well too. Otherwise, why do you do it? I see some folks that just get oh, su super ultra serious about music. And I'm like, do, do you remember why you started creating music? You didn't want to be a rocker because you really enjoyed, you know, business meetings and um, and obsessing over plugin settings. You just wanted to rock out and make music or, or EDM out, um, trap beat out. I don't know. <laughs> Let's continue on. Getting off topic. Darren Daniluk uh, from the pits of metal goodness. Uh, are there any cheaper mastering apps for iOS than Audio Master? Thanks. Yeah, so we did cover a couple of them uh, recently, and I'll, I'll have to jump in. Oh, actually, I won't be able to go to the App Store. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them here, because I did a video a couple of days ago. At the moment, I really think that um, Final Touch is worth it right now. So it's on sale for $7.99. And yes, it's, it does have a bit of a steep learning curve. I showed it on the, uh, on the show we did the other day. If you're not familiar with Final Touch, it is my go-to mastering app for iPad and assuming you're on an iPad it looks a little bit like this and oh, doesn't look like doesn't look like my question form <laughs> it looks a little bit like this and you can see here you've just got you've got complete control of everything so you can control your EQ your reverb your dynamics your stereo imaging your post EQ your maximizer now that that scares a lot of people off but don't forget you've also got presets in here so you can just dial in a preset and then tweak it and then get uh, your results that way. The other one that I do recommend and it's also on sale right now is Grand Finale. These is, this is from our friends at Clev Grand and uh, Grand Finale, again, same sort of deal. You've got a little bit less control. So if, if you're intimidated by Final Touch, and a lot of folks are, including myself, that's what the reason I did, actually, there's a free eight-part series on Final Touch. Search my name, Pete Johns and Final Touch on YouTube, and you'll find my eight-part series. The reason that I created that is I needed to teach myself. And I thought, bugger it, I'm going to teach myself and document my process because other people are probably intimidated by this app as well. But Grand Finale is actually a lot simpler. So you've just got a very simple layout here all on one screen that you can do. And Grand Finale is also available on iPhone. And I think it's, uh, I can't remember the price now. I did it just a couple of days. It's about the same price. It's around that $10 mark as well. And I definitely think picking up either one of these at the moment, especially because they're on sale with the whole Black Friday thing, is definitely a good option because it will just it'll make your it'll make your final mixes sound even better. You'll get those mixes popping, and uh, yeah, that, that, they're my recommendations anyway. Um, but yeah, Audio Master Pro is the other one. There's a free version of that one and a paid version. I think that's also around that ten dollar mark. That does a good job, but is super simple. So that one, you get virtually zero control. All you control is the amount of output. It does all the processing for you. So yeah, but I would go, I would go Grand Finale or Final Touch if you are on an iPhone or iPad. Uh, Glenn Whitfield, hello to you. Glenn, I'll, I'll bring the screen over here so I'm looking uh, ahead rather than off to the side. Uh, hey, Pete, I got myself a Spark Practice Amp by Positive Grid, which links up great with GarageBand through USB on the back. There is a Spark I iOS app which has literally thousands of tones to choose from. Took a, took a while to receive it, but it was worth it. Yeah, and thanks for raising this, Glenn, because I'm... I get tempted time and time again by the the Spark, and I think the reason that I haven't picked it up. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with the Spark, why don't we uh, why don't we show you it here? We'll bring it up on the screen. So Spark app. Jade Star has one of these and has done extensive videos all about it. But if you're wondering what we're talking about here, uh, yeah, as Jade says, love my Spark. Uh, if you're wondering what we're talking about here, oh look, they have a Black Friday sale. Ends in zero zero zero. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here on the Positive Grid website and it says that they're having a sale. 
but it ends now somehow. But I don't think that's right because it still looks like you've got savings here. So yeah, if you're looking to get the Spark Guitar Amp, it's uh, it's at two thirty nine down from two ninety nine at the moment, and it is. It's a practice amp. So if we, oh, we'll go into. Oh, see, it's it, what is it doing? It's adding it to my cart. Can I just look at it, please? No, no, come back. Okay, so ba ba bad for the. Uh, okay, so that's just a special. Here we go. We'll try and bring it up here. Uh, not not full marks for your uh, your interactive shopping experience here, Positive Grid, but there you go. So this is what it looks like. It is a little amp, but the thing is it connects in with your phone and it has its own app and you dial in the tones and instead of just having, you know, your Vox amp or your Marshall amp and it's sounding just like that, it can sound like whatever you dial in. So I would definitely pick one of these up. If I had a smaller space, if I didn't already have what I have here, I would pick one of these up. So the reason I don't use this is that if I've got GarageBand running here on my iPad, which I do, uh, I, I already have a, a setup here where here's my iPad, I'll plug in, I'll set up a guitar tone, and then I've got my monitor speakers, I've got my mixer here, everything can go through, and I can get good quality sound coming out with any app and with any sound. But again, it's not like a guitar amp, the, the actual speakers that I'm using are monitor speakers. So if you want more of that guitar amp experience, then it may definitely be worthwhile checking out the Spark. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't had anyone who's picked one up and said that they hate it or that it doesn't do a good thing. Everyone I know that uses one says it's really, really cool. And there you go. Uh, was it Glenn that, uh, that has added to that as well that has said, yes, digging digging the spark so uh there you go that, that that is what the spark the smart spark guitar amp from positive grid is all about or a boot for my canadian friends so thank you glenn i appreciate your contribution to the show next one here we have nick polisgard says i don't think the built-in sounds for guitar in gb are very good they're not. <laughs> Have you had any plugins to uh, recommend, especially for electric guitar with single coil pickup, Stratocaster, or Telephone? So, yeah, here's the thing. Like, I, I was joking with Patrick uh, in a recent Garage Band weekly show about the fact that, yeah, guitars, for some reason, guitars are really bad in Garage Band. And look, virtual guitars are not good anywhere, but in Garage Band, <laughs> they just seem to be particularly bad. Um, I'll give you a quick demo here. If you're not familiar with Garage Band and its virtual guitars, if we come in here, let's add a virtual guitar, shall we? So if we'll come in here, we'll go to our guitar. Now, obviously, we talked about guitars. You can plug in your own guitar, and that's going to give you a fine tone. But if we come in here and we want an electric guitar tone here, say we wanted something like this Roots Rock, which is one of the better ones, it's going to sound like this. I mean, not terrible, yeah, but a pretty kind of tinny and average guitar tone. Now, we'll just throw some autoplay on here, and we'll play along. Like... Like, it's MIDI guitar 1990s, like circa 1990s, and it hasn't got better. Everything in GarageBand has got better except the guitars and maybe the sampler, although that got a bit of a facelift, but the guitars... I mean, it's not bad. If you said to me, look, if it was 20 years ago and you said, hey, I got this guitar amp simulator, it does this, I would have been blown away. But in 2020... Just not quite cutting it. And the fact that all of our other instruments, so if you, if you consider that when we go to our pianos and we go to our other instruments, the, the whirly that we have in here is great. The electric piano that sounds just like a, uh, like a, an, actual, um, an actual Rhodes, they're really cool. So like, I don't know why the guitars are, are so lagged. Like why, why they can't use some better guitar? I know guitars are not as simple as just a single note that you have on something like the electric piano, but like compare that to this. If we just get the standard GarageBand E piano here. Yeah. So you get really good quality tone and then like the, the actual piano is it's a sampled like Steinway piano. Like I know when, when Steve Jobs first brought it out, he was like, why would you, you know, go and buy a piano when you can have a garage band? But in all seriousness, the tones are really good. So well, I say all that to say this, do I have recommendations? No, but I'm seriously considering what, what I think would be cool is to be able to have a guitar app that has real sampled guitars and a bunch of guitar patterns that you can just dial in that are actual, again, actual sampled guitars. So you could get some power chords and it's just every power chord from a, a drop C, like a, a, an open C tune, right up to, uh, you know, really high 
chords and then different patterns and then different things for different styles. Like we've, we seem to have it for everything. I don't think anyone's cracked it for guitar. And I'm not saying that I'm going to. I mean, in fact, I would love it if someone else just jumps on this and, and makes it because I think that would be the ideal thing that if you had a song, you were writing it, it's in G major and you just want some G major power chords in a particular rhythm, you should be able to just grab an app and dial that in. I think in 2020, that would be a, a good thing. But again, if there's anyone that has recommendations for better guitar tones in GarageBand in particular or apps or interact, I know Jade's showed a few, like there's the Roxon synth that you can use, which is different. There's Geo Shred, which has some decent guitar tones in there, but no one's sold for just the songwriter that wants good quality guitars that they can put in their tracks. Um, the, the acoustic guitar in GB is great though. The acoustic guitar is not bad. Uh, I'll, I'll give it that. It's it's not the worst. I know I'm I'm, sad, I'm being a bit hard on things here, but the the acoustic actually is not the worst. Beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a decent tone, isn't it, for your acoustic guitar? I agree. Uh, yeah, there you go. Apple, Apple should partner up with Ample Sound. Their electric guitar plugins are incredible. Only for PC Mac. Exactly. So I, I'm so jealous because Mike over at Creative Source, if you're not familiar, uh, you should definitely go and subscribe to uh, our buddy Mike, a friend of the show and friend of mine over at Creative Source. But uh, he's actually covered the Ample Sound guitar sims and they sound incredible like they, they're, pro, they're they're real guitars they're programmed just like real guitars i'll just see if i can find his ample sound he's done so many ample sound uh guitar videos but i'll just try and find it so yeah so these ones here and in fact he, uh, the giveaway is over so don't try and get the giveaway but yeah if you're using a if you're using an app if you're using a daw with uh, vsts then yeah there are some amazing guitar vst plugins so especially if you're on pc uh, using something like Cakewalk or uh, or something or um, Persona Studio One, then yeah, they're very very cool. Uh, Jay was looking at them yesterday for Mac. Yeah, there's AU versions of them as well for Mac, I believe. So there you go. Oh, we're all we're all we're all going into the dark side, aren't we? Uh, if, if we lose Jade from mobile creating, what are we going to do? It'll be the How to Mac instead of the How to App. You have to change the whole name of your show, Jade. No, I know I know you still love. I know your heart still, despite your engagement to to Logic. I know your heart. Still, you'll always at least be having an affair with mobile recording. Okay, we're getting way off topic. Let's go back to our form and uh, find our next question. So yeah, thank you for that, Nick. Sorry we couldn't answer it for you, but I guess use a PC or a Mac is the answer for better virtual guitar tones. Or, uh, you know what you should do? Collaborate with someone that plays guitar. This is the thing. We, we do, like, yes, I'm all about virtualization of instruments. I'm all about do-it-yourself culture. But at the end of the day, sometimes best result is to actually collaborate with someone else. So I would recommend joining the Facebook group, Create, Record, Release. Yes, I'm biased because it's the official Studio Live Today Facebook group. But if you jump over there, createrecordrelease.com, that will take you straight to the Facebook group. There are some great people there and a heap of guitarists. So if you put out the word and say, hey, I'm working on this piece. I'd really love someone to contribute some guitar. I'm a keyboard player, so I'm happy to play keys on your track. Like that, we've seen some really cool collaborations come out of that group of late. So uh, that's my recommendation for you there. We'll have a quick drink and then we'll jump into our next question. Question from Ricky Neal. Ever thought about a rap song before or just only pop or synth music? It's a good question, Ricky. And um, yeah, so I have... I have dipped my toe into other genres of music. So most of my stuff is either sort of guitar-driven rock, so electric guitar-driven rock, and probably soft rock, dad rock, <laughs> as, uh, as I like to say. Um, and the, the other side is more of your acoustic folksy uh, music. So yeah, I, I have dabbled, dabbled in other styles. So I did a song called Lucky, which was more of a electronic style music that was made purely with electronic instruments. So all, all of the synths and all of the, the drum beats and loops and sounds. And I made a song called Imagination as well, which uh, again is a hip hop song where I was actually had some, uh, some hip hop lyrics and uh, again, more of that electronic sound. So I do want to delve into more of that because it's a lot of fun and you can do it anywhere. Like, that's the cool thing with something like GarageBand or I don't care what you use, Fruity Loops. I love to call it Fruity Loops. Um, or whatever you want to use, Logic Pro on your Mac if you want to. Uh, then yeah, you've got the option to have all those synth sounds in there. Um, I'll have a cough and then I'll tell you something quick. So, um, sorry. Um, 
I was, I was, I can't remember what it was, but uh, I was answering a comment the other day and someone said, oh man, you should totally use FL. FL is so lit. Um, FL is where it's at. And I'm like, uh, I think my comment was something like, I wonder if all the, all the kids, and yes, I know that's patronizing, but I wonder if all the folks that are using FL Studio actually know that it's called Fruity Loops Studio and how many of them would use it if it was called Fruity Loops? Because FL Studio kind of sounds like, like hard and edgy. Oh man, I'm using FL Studio. It's like, I'm going to do some creating in Fruity Loops. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, it, it, it makes me laugh. Every time someone says, don't use something lame like GarageBand, use FL. And I'm like, oh, so I shouldn't use something like GarageBand. I should use something like Fruity Loops. Maybe. Uh, is this live? Well, it depends on your perception of reality. We could all be living in a simulation and maybe nothing is live. But as far as the definition of live goes, yes, we are 100% live. <laughs> it's been a weird show. I'm in a weird mood. It could be fun. Uh, let's jump into our next question. I think we've got one more here in the form and then uh, we'll circle on back and see if there's any final questions. Our man Sion has a question here. Hope you are doing well. How do you deal with screen recording stopping <laughs> halfway when filming tutorials i've had like 10 videos but the recordings didn't save yeah to be honest on this is why i bought the ipad pro since i've had the ipad pro i have had zero screen recordings fail like goose egg so yeah the problem there is if you're doing stuff like we're doing which is running pretty processor intensive apps pretty ramp RAM intensive apps and you're trying to screen record the full resolution and you're trying to screen record the audio because they've increased the audio to stereo in the recent screen recorders. It's just too much. And unfortunately, instead of uh, iOS saying, hey, we're struggling here, it's about to stop, or oh, now it's stopped, it will just fail. And it won't tell you that it's failed. You'll just get to the end of a 20 minute screen recording and it won't be there. Couple of tips. Make sure you have as much space as you possibly can. So as much storage space. You definitely don't want to run out of storage space. It can have a, a significant effect on your screen recordings. And the other thing is uh, to do it in chunks. So yes, it's super frustrating. But when I used to use my iPad Air 2 and it didn't have as much horsepower as my iPad Pro, what I would have to do is so I'm recording a 20-minute tutorial. I would record five minutes, wait for it to save out the file, check that it had saved the file, then record five minutes, wait, check, five minutes away. That way you're not wasting. So if you do 20 minutes and it's not there, you've just blown that time. But five minutes mentally I can deal with. And yeah, look, it's not the best solution, but it, it, it just, it's just that when they put the screen recorder in, they weren't assuming, they were thinking people were just, you know, screen recorder, them moving around on some sort of screen or, or a, a tutorial of on their home screen. They probably weren't thinking of running all of the apps that we run and all the processor intensive stuff. I, I, on my screen recording videos, I get questions from folks saying, oh, I was just playing Fortnite and I just fragged this dude and, and my 48 minute recording and it just crapped out on me. What's going on, man? And I'm like, you're running like a, a ridiculously processor and graphic intensive app and trying to record it and doing your speech like your over overdubbing of your speech as well and yeah your phone i'm lucky your phone's not exploding or like catching fire because uh, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff for, for something to do and they're like oh man i'm running my iphone 7 i'm like yeah you're, that's, that's the problem um it's not really designed for, for doing that so that's that's my tip on that one the other thing you can do is um record it on a pc or a mac so i've, I've started doing that i know jay's been doing that you can connect it up via uh, hdmi so if you have a, a, a dongle that has hdmi output you can uh, connect it up via hdmi and record the screen that way on a different device or just just put a camera on it <laughs> i've done that i've gotten so frustrated before i've just pointed my camera at my screen and recorded it direct so that's uh that's uh that's another option that you have there uh dpg does connecting an audio interface to an ipad through an adapter and powered usb hub anyhow affect the sound quality say compared to a regular laptop pc setup uh no so it really doesn't so the thing to keep in mind with digital recording is if I have this, so I have my Steinberg UI22C, right? I can plug this into my PC or my Mac or my iPhone or my iPad. It's connecting up via USB. So it's connecting up via a digital output. So, and if, however it's powered, the only thing is as long as it is powered on. So the only, the only drawback is that if you're not using a decent powered USB hub and you, pl you plug it into your iPhone or iPad, then it can just sort of crap out halfway through. So as long as, let's assume that you've got a Lightning to USB 3 adapter, a genuine Apple one and a powered USB hub, you could plug this into an iPad, iPhone, whatever, and it's going to be super reliable. The quality of the sound is going to be 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz 
audio. So if you plug the same thing into your Mac or your PC, the only difference is that because this goes up to 192 kilohertz and 32 bit floating uh, audio, you could increase the quality of the audio that way. I don't know too many folks who actually record in anything but 24 bit and either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Like as soon as you go to 96 kilohertz, the difference in the home studio is like so minuscule, but your file sizes are doubled. And 192 kilohertz, four times the file size because it's taking four times as many digital snapshots of your analog audio. If you think about it in that way, it's like resolution on a camera. It's taking more, there's more in that image. So yes, you get slightly better audio quality, but for the sort of recordings that most of us do in the home studio, not gonna make a lick of difference. So yeah, it will not impact the quality of your digital sound coming out because it's all about the analog audio going in. It converts it in that box. And then all it's doing is sending the digital, the ones and zeros from whatever box you're using into whatever digital device, whether it's Mac, PC, iPhone, or iPad, it really doesn't matter. It's the same ones and zeros. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just me. No, with the screen recording thing, it's not just you. It is, uh, it is a known, not a known issue. I was going to say it's a known issue. It's known by me and it's known by a, a lot of other folks as well. Um, so yes, um, so that's answered that one. I did see another quick question that someone has thrown in. Uh, no, I can't see that one. So uh, where are we at as far as time goes? Have we answered all the questions from the form? We have. So we are through the questions on the form there. I did have some questions uh, from through the week, but uh, we might save those for a future show because we are coming up here towards the end of the show. So uh, if you have any final responses, any final questions, any final comments, you've got about five minutes to uh, throw those in here. And uh, then we will uh, we'll finish up for the show for the week. It's been a fun one. It's been a weird one, but it's been a fun one. Uh, Young Rubio, speaking of uh, recording and noise, says, uh, I use iRig Pre. It has background hiss noise. This is an interesting one. Why don't we talk about this again uh, to finish up with? Talk about background noise. So for starters, if you want a really good app that can help you with that, if, you, if you've got the gear and you're using what you're using, uh, look up Bruce Free. Bruce Free from Clev Grand is a noise reduction plugin. I demoed it on my Black Friday apps video. So go back two videos ago and check out that if you're here on YouTube. But um, Bruce Free lets you sample the noise that you're getting, that background hiss, and then it does some crazy voodoo algorithm stuff to actually remove that. So even when your audio is playing, it's not just like a noise gate that cuts it off before and after, it actually processes your signal. So if you've got noisy audio background hiss, you can use that. What does your hiss come from? Well, your hiss comes from your preamp. And the better quality preamp and the better quality analog to digital converters you have, the less hiss you're going to get. So if I'm completely quiet right now, there is background noise, right? You can, if you're listening really carefully, you can hear my computer fan. You can hear birds outside potentially. You can hear if there's anyone in the house doing anything. It'll all come through because this is a uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's going to pick up a lot of sound. If I just turn up my volume of this, let's take a listen to the hiss now. So yeah, you get a whole lot more of it. So number one thing is make sure that you're not turning your preamp up too much because you're going to pick up a whole lot more noise. You need to balance it so that you're hitting those peaks between 50 and 70%. We talked about it before. Same with a microphone, 50 and 70%. If you're turning up too loud, you're going to get too much noise and way too much background noise. So balancing that out is super important. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing to keep in mind is the quality of the components. So at the start of the show, I took you through all of the different uh, quality audio interfaces for for guitars. And the same thing applies for your microphone. So the iRig 2 here, and uh, so the Tascam iXZ or iXZ, this one is going to have a whole lot more hiss because this is doing, uh, this is not, do sorry, this is not doing the analog to digital conversion. This is all analog and the quality of the components in this are not as good as your digital stuff. So yes, you're going to get a whole lot more hiss and noise with this. With your iRig Pre, if we just come in here to Sweetwater, there's two versions of the iRig Pre. So if you go to the iRig Pre, there's the Pre and the Pre HD. And Pre just stands for preamp, by the way. So what the iRig Pre is, it's like a version of the iRig that only has the mic. So it only has the mic input. So here's the iRig Pre, an XLR microphone interface for iOS and Android. It looks like that. It's 40 bucks, so it's cheap and affordable. But again, because it's using the analog connection, 
you are going to get some noise, some interference, and some hiss in your life. Now, if you want to get a better quality sound, uh, apart from using something like Bruce Free, the only real way to go is to use something like this, the iRig, whoop, the iRig Pre HD, which is similar, but actually has that digital connection. So uh, where are we? Pre HD, here it is. So the iRig Pre HD, it's a hundred bucks and it's just a preamp. So this is why I actually recommend the iRig Pro IO because what the iRig Pre is, the Pre HD is, is an iRig Pro IO without the guitar input and the MIDI. So if you if you don't need guitar or MIDI and you want to save yourself 50 bucks, sure, go for the iRig HD uh, mic pre. But uh, yeah, again, it's it's very, very similar. Again, plugs in via USB or via um, uh, lightning. And uh, you've got your direct monitor in there, your volume, your gain. And again, make sure your gain control is set right. You got your headphone for monitoring and you got your uh, five volt DC plug there for your power and your connection. So yeah, th that's kind of the breakdown, how it works when it comes to hissy and uh, noisiness coming through is check your input gain, check that you're using the best quality gear you can. And if you really can't avoid it, oh, by the way, record somewhere quiet too. Like th this room has a lot of resonance. So if I'm recording actual vocals, I would probably go into my walk-in closet over there so that I actually don't get the reflections from the walls here in the residence. Doing something like this is not a big deal, but you can still probably hear that because this room isn't treated, there is a little bit of bouncing going on around the wall. So you'll hear a little bit of reflective sound. So keep in mind where you're actually recording as well. And uh, yeah, if you do want to check out gear, guess what? <laughs> studiolivetoday.com slash gear is where you can find all the gear that I recommend for your home studio. We've got folks here in the chat talking about pancakes and I'm really hungry because I haven't had breakfast yet. So I'm going to have to call it a day there. But thank you for being here. Once again, you can head over to studiolivetoday.com to join the fun over there. All of the videos that I've produced, more than 1,000, I think we're up to about 1,300 videos there in total about GarageBand, about recording, guitars, vocals, digital audio workstations. Again, the mindset stuff that's super important as well. That's all over there. You can join the patrons and patrons patreon.com slash Pete John. Thank you to Ron who just signed up over there. Uh, we've got a, a, a nice community of folks there that are sharing. And if you want the behind the scenes stuff, if you want to learn like what Sion was asking about, if you want to learn about how I actually create videos, how I actually run this channel, then uh, you'll find all of that over at Patreon. We're not done for the weekend. Oh no, we're just getting started. Later today, in a couple of hours time, the happy hour Beatles edition Yes, all Beatles, all the time. That should be a whole lot of fun. And then tomorrow, guess what? It is Garage Band Weekly's 50th episode anniversary show. So we've got some, some fun planned for that. It should be a good chat and a special edition with maybe a surprise guest or two. We'll see. You'll have to tune in to find out what happens. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I hope you are kind to yourself. That's always super important. I hope you're kind to others because once you're kind to yourself... Pay it forward, be kind to others, and keep creating. I'll see you soon. Bye.